I'm sharing the live link in the Zoom meeting. Okay. okay. I don't know why, what is making that noise. I hope my voice is audible enough. Yeah, your voice is audible. Okay. So one second, I want to share. Then we are going to give like two minutes and we can we can start. Okay. Is the speaker here? Okay, this is one minute past eight. Please um, get to your colleague, your cluster members, ask them to join. At exact 8.03, we'll start. Okay, I see that the speaker is already, I would also make him a co-host. David, you're welcome. Welcome, our host is already joining us. Yes, so the main two more minutes, please. Let's finish setting up everything. Okay, this is 8.03. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome all the Cambites, intending Cambites and viewers, uh, the live uh, Facebook Live. Thank you for joining us. Today is day two of the Cam at four. We are celebrating, we are celebrating God's awesomeness with us. He has been faithful to us. And um, today we'll be having a speaker to talk to us on penetrating our market. Your head should already be thinking, kicking on what is what is your expectation on today's class. Please get your bios, get your writing materials by your side as we kickstart. Okay, we move down to the camp anthem. I'm going to share that in just a second. Of our resorts. 
and buys results for people who support each other, knowing that we are win, we are walking progress. Yes, we will achieve resources. That's what makes okay, let's see. Oh, from the this noble group, Lord, please make us all winners. You are muted. Udeme, you are muted. Okay, can you hear me, Doc? Yes. Okay, I've seen a lot of people still coming in. Please keep joining. As you come in, identify your cluster numbers. And as much as you can, the intending um, can by it, please identify your enrolling numbers. Okay, a very quick one, and um, we move over to the overall DKM drillers video. The beginning of a new era of doing things. It's a new dawn. The beginning of a new era of doing things differently is set upon us. Repositioning to be more is aimed at providing us with a roadmap towards a prosperous future leading to 2024. Translating this to a reality now brings us the most important conversation. Are we ready? Dr. Casey Mentorship Platform DCAP is inviting all scholars, intelligentsias, and young professionals to its fourth anniversary with the theme, The Renanzas, Repositioning to Be More. Date, 18 to 24th of September, 2023. Meet our speakers, Dr. Kelechiku Omukamike, founder of DCAP, Dr. Tammy Francis, founder of Catalyst for Change Global, Michael Onwatuegu, founder of Ujira Soft, Professor Dr. Brando Okolo, Professor of Material Science, Peterson Akodi, founder IWB and Spacebook, John Ozegbe Uhulu, CEO MD, Evermore All Limited and Total Aviation Integrated Services Limited, Philip Adebayo, PhD scholar, University of Calgary, Canada, and David Francis Echo, founder Dahel Consults. Streaming will be live on Zoom and YouTube platforms. Time 8 to 9 p.m. GMT plus 1. You can register at https forward slash forms.gle. It promises to be amazing. It promises to be educative. It promises to all be about being more. Hashtag till we all win. Okay, 
course, of course, it promises to be quite educational, quite educational, and you have to set up your writing materials, all of those. It came at four, wouldn't have been possible without stories. And these stories, as in one way or the other, inspires a lot of us, including me. And um, we are going to move over to the camp stories. So just you understand that the camp is not just celebrating at four, but the awesomeness, the rejection, the love letters, of course, the wins. So let's go over to the videos of our stories. Um, that one will be done in seconds. One second, let me take that again. Okay, doctor. I try it again. Would they make you mute? I, I'm getting some echo in the background. So let me give that a shot again. Um, Okay, Doc, I think the sound is muted. So you couldn't hear it? Okay. Let me give it a shot again. Hi everyone, best of all, fashion medical story. I would like to say a very big congratulations to Dr. Casey and the camp and happy fourth anniversary. My name is Esther Wanko and I am a Decamp Pride. I am currently studying at the University of Strathclyde in Masters in Finance, which I won under the PCDF scholarship. And I will say all thanks to the camp and Dr. Casey. So, I joined the camp in 2021 and I would say that was like the best decision of my life and I would never take the opportunity for granted. I'm saying this because ever since I joined the camp, my 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 sense of direction has changed, my focus in life has changed, my um my humanity, my, my, my kindness towards everyone, the way I see things are quite different because everyone in the camp are full of humility, selflessness the willingness to give and to want to give to people to provide the right resources is it so for resources jerry resources and the camp is not more it's not just about scholarship they are also very much conscious about volunteering giving to the society i could remember last year 2022 i was so much driven to to um to educate the young younger generations especially those in secondary public secondary school um like to serve as a mentor to some of them. And this was also one of the <clears throat> initiatives of the camp that keeps the organization going. It is a starting place for you 
to be able to impact society, impact yourself as well. And I will say, my journey in the UK won't have been complete without the impact of the king because I know how much Dr. Casey prepared us for the scholarship, how we were able to ace the interview because of the camp resources in us. Thank you so much and happy birthday once again, the camp. Wow, that was quite inspirational. I hope you learned something from that story. I hope you learned to be kind. I hope you learned to be resilient. I hope you learned to be determined. I hope you learn to be steadfast in everything you do. That was quite an interesting one. Thank you so much, Esther, for sharing your story to us. And it was quite educational. All right. We'll be having a guest citation flowing in almost immediately. And one of the excitement I'm having this evening is that he is an applicable mic. And I'm giving a shout out to him. I'm super excited to be moderating as he will be speaking to us. Let us have the citation of our speaker. VCAMP and four speakers profile, David Francis F. Young, a United States Exchange Program alumni, Savvy Fellow, Microsoft Certified Data Analyst Associate, Arthur, EdTech Trainer, Fellow, Association of Nigerian Philosophers, Co-Founder and Lead Strategist, Gahel Consultants, and Techies Limited, Vice President, Anti-Suicide Global Initiative, Founder, Community Today Initiative, Consultant, Nonprofit Management, Social Entrepreneurship, Data Analysis and Fundraising, and Author. We owe the future a responsibility to ensure the present is not lived in error. Ladies and gentlemen, make welcome David Francis F. Young, Founder, Gahel Consult, who will be speaking on the topic, Penetrating Your Market, Doing It Differently, Social Etiquette. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much for that. The floor will be open to our speaker now. Please make him a co-host. Yes, he's already are, a co-host, yeah. Materials, wherever you are, uh, make I hear you. Me. I hear you. Yes. Welcome, you can hear me, isn't it? Yeah, sure, I can hear you. Right. Um, I, don't, I don't come on campus. I greet everybody. I'm like, <laughs> okay. I, I'm so happy. I'm I'm so happy to see. Uh, this is the first time I'm being on this platform, and I really appreciate everyone for. Um, I love the anthem. I appreciate all of you for showing your faces and making this kind of real. I've been following Dr. Kalechi and a couple of uh, folks in the, the camp, and I'm, I always ask myself, how do how does these people? I mean, how does this guy do this? You know, traveling and really getting to meet people, and it kicks my heart to see that um, he's doing so much more with his team to ensure that a lot more persons are getting that fulfillment, right? So my job here is very, very simple. My job is to make you think and to ask yourself why um, you need to do more. I might be using myself as an, as an example. I might also be using a couple of companies or businesses that you know, but I'm pretty sure that, let me, I, I guess I can share my screen. Okay, give me a sec. Mm. All right. So 
let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, 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 yes. Coming up, okay. Um, so what can you see, please? Let me be sure. <laughs> okay, they came at four. It's clear. Oh, all right, perfect. So that's that's me when I, I was a small boy. I think I took these pictures a couple of <laughs> a couple of years back, and I celebrate all of you that the renaissance of repositioning to be more. That's the topic for today. But my special topic, which I rebranded in a sense, is how you can break through the noise using social etiquette to stand out in in your market. So. Before I proceed, I'm pretty much sure that we have people here who are either interested in you want to run your business tomorrow, you want to own an empire tomorrow. You know, it's just like relationships, right? If you if you are very pretty young lady, that's always this idea of I want a tall, handsome, not too short, not too brief. Uh, God fearing, God fearing, they always come last, you know. They will mention the ones where they did their mind, but God fearing, and then anyway, who stop, right? And then if you are the guy, the guy is like, okay, just give me peace, you know, just be attractive and give me peace. And maybe some persons who mention a couple of a couple of things. Yeah, Mercy says tall dark. Oh, I forgot. Tall, dark, you see. So relationship-wise, people have their own priorities, okay? If you are really from a wealthy family, you discover that the, the kind of guy you want would be totally different. The first, you won't, you would even mention the type of family you want the person to come from, right? Because perhaps you don't want to marry down or something like that. Then it's same with the guys, okay? So relationship wise, people have a list of what they want to, the kind of person they want. I have, I have a, a list myself. It's not, it's not in a, like a textbook kind of list, but I know, <laughs> I know the type of people that pick my interest. And top of my list is that you have to be very, you have to be very conversational, right? You have to be on the same flow with me, right? Now, if we leave the relationship uh, ecosystem and go into business, people would look at something like, where is my business going to be situated, right? Is it going to be in Nigeria? Is it going to be in Kenya? Is it going to be... So you have to look at location-wise first. From there, you look at community-wise. What local government is it going to be in? What, um, what language are my... Are, are, are my customers or clients going to speak? So if you get to understand how this works in the business sense, and then you go to the academia, right? I mean, in my family, I, I can't think of anyone that I've gone to school more than myself. In fact, I don't go to school. Say, they, now, now school, they go me. If there's anything like that. I've been, <laughs> I've been in the four worlds of the university for so many years. And uh, part of my experience, I don't really get to talk about this, is my experience as a graduate assistant, uh, assisting my professors back in the day, publishing all kinds of papers before I decided to take a break and focus on tech, right? And I discovered even in the academia, um, you would hear people always tell you something like, uh, professors, or even some of you who are graduates, uh, graduate assistants, you hear something like, in the next five years, in the next 10 years, I'm going to be owning, I'm going, I have to be a professor, I have to be an associate professor, I have to be able to travel and make this conference work, I should be able to implement this innovation, I should be able to sell these products, you know, people say that a lot as well in the academia. So if you want to look at our life as human beings, even our parents, okay, even our parents, when I was little, I mean, when I was a teen, my dad wanted me to become a mechanical engineer because he owned the company at the time. 
a structural engineer. I would always, after school, I would always go to his workplace and then see how things are done. I'm his only son, so very much understandable. He probably wanted someone to take over from his small empire. And I fell in love with the structures, the machines. I was designing all kinds of things, right? Going to, um, got a job even after my graduation until I said, I want to start talking with human beings instead of machines. Then I, <laughs> I left mechanical engineering to humanities, but that's not that story before I came back to, to technology. So even our parents are not so empty of this. There's always that idea of uh, my, my kids in Nigeria at, at, the, at the time, what, what career are your parents telling, or what career are parents telling people now? Do they still say, yeah, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be a doctor? What is popular now? Of course, that is still popular. That is very much popular. Oh, it's still popular. Oh, awesome. Yes. You have to be a doctor, you have to be a lawyer, you have to be an engineer. Ah, make a year say you want you discovered your talent in football, <laughs> or you <laughs> discovered your talent in uh, uh, some parents, they do they, they are coding. And if you mention coding, the thing is like ah, 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 ah. You want to join bad company, sitting down in front of a computer, you know, they want to kind of, this is a typical African home, right? But Yahoo boy, according to Mary Rose in the comment section, right? So most parents are not aware of the trend. So what I'm saying is there is a trajectory. There's personal decisions we make for ourselves. There are decisions other people are making for us especially when we were teens. But most importantly, this presentation is not for those who are trying to discover what they want to do, right? This presentation is for those who have discovered something that piques their interest, something they would want to try on and then see how they can become more from that. You need the substance to be able to grow from there. If you do not have the substance, what it means is that as you are listening to me, ask yourself, what is my substance? What is that thing I can offer the world? What is that thing that if anybody wakes you up right now to talk about, to discuss, that you are not going to have any issue talking about it? Myself, I know. If anybody asks me right now how to, let me put it bluntly, like my normal self. If anybody asks me right now how to become a fundraiser or how to beg money, I'm a professional beggar. That's what we used to call ourselves back in the day. <laughs> what that means is that I worked in the nonprofit sector, in the, in, in the nonprofit spe sector, specifically in the fundraising and project management section. So I became a professional beggar for over 10 years curating tons of many events in different international organizations, I think three, and in over 26 states in Nigeria before I left to the US and the, almost was tempted to do same before I, you know, gave myself a knock and say, guy, calm down, calm down, calm down. No, be everywhere you could beg money from people. <laughs> but I enjoyed. Then, even right now, if you wake me up and say, Oh God, David, how can we get money from people? I will give you a list, okay? I'll give you a list <laughs> because that is what I was doing, right? We got tons of funding for our nonprofit endeavors. We were able to, we got the first, we got funding for the, the very first uh, school farm to school meal, uh, to school farm to school meals project that was sponsored by the Danish government. We left our office, went to the embassy, and we say, you people have money here. You don't want to share, you know? Oh yeah, bring out this money. We presented that in a professional way, of course. And they were like, okay, okay, okay. Uh, we've not really sponsored this program. 
some embassies in Nigeria, they have money that have been giving them. You know, this was years back. They have a lot of money to provide for certain programs, but so many people don't know, okay? So someone like me, I know, when once I discover new, who is who is the new guy on ground, I'm, I'm writing the gather my team, we are doing things. And then we also came up with this, uh, the first rural center children fashion show in, in West Africa, where we gathered so many uh, street children and children from underdeserved background, visited a couple of Southern communities, and then we brought them together. We have over 70 of them that were under our care at the time. And it was mind blowing. We got funding for that during COVID, we got funding for the child development program, uh, I think in a quite boom states in Abuja. It may, so think about, I'm saying this because even as I'm speaking, you can see uh, the energy I'm exhuming to tell you that I'm so good at some of these things. And then in the tech ecosystem, when you talk about data analysis, you wake me up to, to somebody wanted, I don't know if the, I don't know if the, the, the guy wanted to see if I was uh, real. You know, normally if, if you want to get a job, Normally, if you want to get a job in the tech space, right, you have to apply or it's by recommendation and then they will schedule you for an interview. But this particular day on a Friday, very dangerous day, I got I got a call from the UK. Just, from just the company. very quickly, are you sharing something? I think you wanted to share something and stop. So some people are wondering if you intend to, you are sharing a different screen versus what looked like a no, no, no. screenshot. I, I stopped okay. sharing. It's intentional. Okay. It's intentional. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My slides are my slides are too few. I, no, I no, want no, people please. to. I'm enjoying the flow. Go ahead. <laughs> I want people to. I want people to come in and ask <laughs> themselves those intrinsic questions. The questions that you need to be so good at something. You need that essence of you. That that when you are expressing it, you know the whole world can feel it. It's just like when you are reaching out, uh, a lot of young guys here, when, when you are, you ask yourself, why is it that the, the, the good guys, they don't have all the beautiful women, especially from your university, you know them now, they don't have all the beautiful women, they don't, they are not in the best circles, they are suffering, you know, they get the skills, but they don't even know how to make money from it. Then one World War guy from uh, Joe Legba or one under the bridge somewhere, will come up and uh, be like, ah, Udeme, Bey, Bey, I better come make I follow you talk. You know, they say, and because Udeme has not gotten someone to meet her, people are scared. She's so beautiful. She has a car. She has this. People are scared, you know. And before you know it, she's intrigued. She loves the confidence, right? It's because that guy knows that the only thing he probably has is that essence, that courage to approach anyone. But the good guy, you know, I'm talking about this in the relationship, but the good guy is right there, overthinking. Ah, will she like me? Oh, I, or if she reject me, what will I do? Ah. That's why I keep telling people, if you are so good at something, one way to test it, guys, one way to test it is apply for opportunities. And if you don't get a rejection in your life, right? you will not be able to go deeper into your essence. You will not be able to make that application, that project, that innovation. You won't make it deeper. You won't come out with something that people look at and say, no, 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 no. You deserve it, in fact. When Google came up with Gmail to fight the rival uh, Yahoo, uh, Yahoo Mail, which so many people back, back then used, they employed this guy. You guys can search it out. They employed this guy who was in charge of a product, like a, a startup within a startup. The Gmail we know today is a startup within Google as a company. So they came up. They started having hackathons, you know, these tech, these tech guys. They started having those discussions. And before you know, the guy was, So to, to the Google guys, the management guys, and they asked them to, this thing is not going to work. 
you guys can watch that documentary or just check out the, the story of the way he presented it, the way he presented that idea, it became a success. So that Gmail became a startup within a startup in Google. And then if you check it out, we're still talking about social etiquette. And I'm saying, if in case you are lost, I'm saying, go down before we proceed. Ask yourself, what is that thing you are so good at? That's the first thing. What is that thing anybody wakes you up today? And then, you know, ask you your question. So I was talking to you guys about this person that was recommended to by whoever, right? And the person called me on a Friday. They know that I'm a phone guy, right? Friday, I'm looking for a way to go and have my phone somewhere. So how can you call me on a Friday? You didn't tell me that uh, someone recommended you give me time to prepare for an interview. He called me and was like, oh, there's this project from a, a supply chain industry in the UK that he doesn't have the time to look at the, the developer options. He, he was That I was recommended by somebody that they want me to look at it. And I was like, man, even when we were talking, the guy, they yelled Bedou for back. So it was like, no, 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 this, 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 this is urgent. I just want to know, I want to ask you a few questions to know if you are the right fit for it. Oh, man. I just had to tell him, you know what? Just give me a sec. Let me get into my car and then, you know, close out the noise. And then this guy started asking me questions. Questions on VB and macros. Do you know how to do this? I said, oh, yeah, I've been doing that for a couple of months and that's what I do. He started throwing questions. Whether he came to test me or not, the thing is that guy, we started having chats after that on WhatsApp and then I got that job much later. I was able to provide, of course, when I get all those small, small jobs, I, I give it to either my students or my colleagues and then they'll just go back. But you, like the old guy, you need to be so good at it to be able to get the big clients. So if someone makes that type of call to you right now and say, uh, Chukwe Buka, Victor Didi, I was recommended to meet you. You know, you, they say you are good at X or Y. Please, we would want you to come to our office, but we want to be sure if you know what you are doing. And they ask you a question. Maybe you are doing any of, you have a product. They ask you a question. You don't even know because that product or that service you offer is not part of your essence. It's not part of the thing that is your blood and sweat and tears. You haven't experienced rejection to be able to redirect, you know, making that project better for yourself, right? When I applied for the Mandela Washington Fellowship, I'm, I, I got it uh, on first trial. And people always say that they always get it, you know, maybe after they they apply the first time, then they'll go back to the go back to the uh, drawing board, apply the second time, right? I apply the third time before they got it. It's same with a lot of scholarships, but a lot of you would get some scholarships at the first, at your first trial. Now, don't think that it, it just happened. Don't think that uh, you are you are the best human being on earth. You know, success doesn't happen incidentally. What it meant for you at that point in time is that when you applied for that program, you were totally ready to talk about your essence without copy and paste. And because the person reading your application understood and was able to connect with that essence far away, wherever they are marking the scripts, the person connected because of his years of our years of experience of reading people's essences or intrinsic value. The person have connected and to say, no, we cannot say no to this guy. Right? So you can go ahead and read all the stories of those who have gotten scholarships in left, right, center, read those stories. But I keep telling people before you go to read those stories, make sure that you provide something of value, something that you can be proud of to share with the world. And when you share these things with the world, guys, you can now begin to read all the scholarship stories you have to be able to summarize your story. You are not editing your story. This is where people get it wrong. 
Your job is not to edit your story. Your job is to summarize your story sitting on the shoulders of people who were there before you. Because if you edit your story, what it means is that you are editing your story based on the story somebody shared with you on LinkedIn, on YouTube. You keep listening and the more you listen, have you ever, have you ever introduced somebody, um, maybe your boyfriend, have you ever introduced somebody you love to your friend? You have never had any problem with this guy or this girl, but you introduce this person to your, maybe your best friend or your parents. And all of a sudden, they tell you, ah, this guy, no, the way he's speaking, this is nose. I remember people from his place, they, are, they don't think well, oh, everybody from that is village are very, 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 very dangerous people. And then they ask you questions you never expected. And the more you feed in your own essence in extension, your own relationship, to people that don't know what you have passed through, to people that don't know why and what you made out of this person. You begin to feed in into their own edits. What happened? You go home. Uh, the guy that was looking so handsome to you, uh, the, 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 the next thing you be, um, begin to like, um, um, hi, David, all these are quite bomb people, all these Calabar people. Eh? I, 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 it's like this relationship will not work again. No? I've been hearing something. Ah, you've been hearing something since when? Two years we have been together. All of a sudden, you start editing our story to meet what people are saying. Guys, I don't know if you, you are following what I'm saying, right? If you are not sure of your essence, if you are not sure of your value, if you are not sure of your business and your passion, people will edit it for you. And that is why today, today you are selling shoes on WhatsApp status. Tomorrow it is perfume. The next day you are you are following, you are talking about Big Brother Niger. On, on. So every day you are selling different things. Have you ever seen someone that have look at the story of Nike? Look at the story of Nike, for instance. Look at the luxury guys, the Louis Vuitton and all those luxury guys. They are top on their list. Okay, look at Elon Musk. Look at top businesses. Eh? So tomorrow now you wake up and you see Dr. Kelechi is selling weak. Uh -uh. Are you not going to be confused? Eh? <laughs> you are going of to be confused. Of course I will. Of course. You are like, ah, did they hack? Did they hack his account? His account has been hacked. <laughs> So people should be able to identify you with your essence. You can make fun and share all kinds of things on social media, but don't lose your essence. So my slide is not plenty. I'm just going to take you guys through the things I want to show you. And then that'll be it. I hope you can see my screen. Of course, it's um, popping up. Yes, clear. Okay. Let me let me close my 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 face so that people will not will stop looking at my handsome face and concentrate on the on the slides. Okay. All right, it's clear now, right? Absolutely. Awesome. So this is it. What is that thing that is going to make you stand out? Remember, I'm still talking about my topic and why it's very important. And I say this topic is not for those that don't even know how to stand. The fact is you have to be able to stand before you are able to stand out. Isn't it? So if you don't know where you are, find your essence, find your value. In philosophy back in the day, um, um, the Igbos, some of my Igbo lecturers, who always call it the pim. What is the pim of your existence? What is that main thing? What is the thing inside your thing? Okay, what in, in existence? What is what is the easiness of your existence? Anyway, let's not go there. So, if you want to break through the world, remember that the one thing that is going to make you break through is the thing called social etiquette, and when we say breakthrough, we are looking at the noise. You need to cut through the noise. 
You are not the only one selling shoes on WhatsApp. Why would anyone want to buy your shoes? You are not the only ed tech platform on ad. Why would anyone want to go in? Sometimes I just sit down and like I said, people just call me and they are sending messages. It's because of my social etiquette. The other day I was asking on Facebook, it's like I am too peaceful on this Facebook. I want violence. I want trouble always. And people are like, ah, Mr. David, don't try to, if you want to try it, let us suggest, go and attack this group of people. They mention them. I don't want to mention it here. So that people will not zone out. <laughs> and I say, no, 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 I don't want. But offline, if you do nonsense, I will show you nonsense. But online, because of my social etiquette, I have to be able to attach my these keywords to my life. I have to be polite. I have to be respectful. I have to show that these behaviors I have, these customs I have, are respectful to people. And social etiquette, some of the key words, again, are unwritten rules. For instance, um, uh, those of you that have been to the UK, um, you know that it's not, let me, it's not even the UK anyway. You know that there are some restaurants that they don't sell gari, they don't sell semo, they don't sell fufu. Abi, the unwritten unwritten rule in that place is when you go, you have to use fork and knife. Eh? You have to use, if you are going to a Chinese restaurant, they will give you their chopsticks, isn't it? Those are all unwritten rules in certain places. Your, so social etiquette means when you go to these places, you read the room. You know what you are supposed to do. Are you supposed to get the menu? Are you supposed to say hi? Are you supposed to be polite to people? Are you supposed to give tips in the US? We don't give tip tire. Everybody, um, like the first time I, I, when I moved to DC and then got a job with uh, one international organization. Are you guys hearing me? Yes, oh. yes. Then I had moved, I had moved from Michigan to DC um, at Michigan, I didn't see any reason to cook because I, I was always eating from the cafeteria and I love the meals from, from uh, Sean, which is the name of the cafeteria to, uh, or the restaurant. I could take anything and then, you know, the school would pay for it. But when I moved, got a job in D.C., um, uh, the, the gari that I brought from Nigeria, I didn't see the need to, 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 to cook or to do anything. So these people were charging me 90, 70 to $90. I was so hungry. So I went to this restaurant and then this guy came. The guy was so polite. I was like, hey, this, this guy is so polite. He, I can't even order anything here and eat and I will be very satisfied. I was so hungry. You know, it was like two, two to four hours movement, you know, from flight. And then I had to wait at the airport to be, to be picked. And this ran into us. I didn't get to eat so well. I don't eat in between meals, right? But then I went to the restaurant. The guy was so polite, so respectful. You know, I think he, he, he looked like a Mexican. Came and, oh, what can we offer you? And then he brought the menu. And everything on that menu, my mind was like, I'm all, look, look, whether anything will resemble Akbu or Fufu or whatever. <laughs> I wanted to eat something heavy. I didn't no see evidence. anything like that. I didn't see anything like rice or stew or um, even some of the uh, American meals that I was familiar with, American salad. I didn't get to see all of that. Then I saw shrimps. I saw seafood. I saw, uh, you know, in Nigeria, when we talk about seafood, we are talking about correct, correct fish, fresh fish with shrimps. Fisherman you know, soup. Fisherman soup. soup. Thank you. Uh -huh. you get it. I was like, ah, finally, I don't see seafood. Ah, my brothers and sisters, when this guy brought this thing, do you know crap? You know crap now? Of course. This guy brought three crabs, well decorated in a very big, big plate. I look at him, I say, are you still bringing more? He said, oh, that's it. You, 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 you wanted some sea meals. That's, that's it. Please enjoy your meal. And please, if you need anything, don't forget to call me. I look at this guy, I look at my colleague. I say, ah, ah, with this hunger, this guy get mine to bring this, this three, these three things. 
And I look, it, it, it was it was funny. At the end of the day, I, need, I ended up paying uh, $70. The next day, nobody tell me, guy, enter kitchen, start cooking. So what am I saying? Sometimes when you are extremely polite in your business, in presenting your business, your product, and even yourself, all right, people can forgive you even if they are angry your social interactions would be very much on point. So learn that one and why this is very crucial. If you are running a business that would demand people reaching out to you on WhatsApp, okay? Don't tell people if after they have paid for your service because you were very fast in responding to them when they, when they didn't pay. Immediately they pay. Before you, they receive your next message is six hours. No, you have to learn it because it is in respecting people's time to have social interactions with you that you are able to cut through the noise and make a lasting impression. That is the first thing. You have to learn those keywords and ask yourself, what is that thing I'm doing now that is going to make people to respect even when something goes wrong? This, they would. Have you ever been in that situation, right? where people would forgive you because of your social etiquette. It could be a mistake. You could mess up in your workplace. They won't give you any memo or, or, or lay you off. They would know, oh, this guy is very respectful. He knows our customs. He knows how, he knows how to respect our space, isn't it? So know that. The second is you have to know your audience. And one way you can know your audience is you have to ask questions like, who are your audience? Um, last week when I was talking to my students about TikTok, I, I told them, sometimes you guys come to social media and then complain. And you begin to say something like, every time I go to TikTok, I am seeing women twerking, men twerking. Everybody, you know, my social, my mental health is in shambles. Have you ever heard something like that? Or you come to Facebook, or you go to LinkedIn and they kind of post that you are, they kind of post that you are seeing a post that will kill you. <laughs> they are posts that will make you question your entire existence. Now I told my I told my student, I told them, look, and I'm telling you right now, if you want this social media platform to get the right data off you you need to be able to feed what your social etiquette is like. And what are you gonna do? How do you feed your social etiquette to social media handles? Is by making sure, for instance, you go to TikTok, you watch one twerk video. You don't like to watch those things, but you go, you watch, they are dancing 30 seconds. The next video is a video of scholarships. You see all these scholarship people serve, you scroll past, you didn't last up to two seconds. TikTok will now show you another video, another twerk video. You watch that one, 35 seconds. The next video you watch, a motivational video. Maybe let's say you just lost your job or maybe your boyfriend or your girlfriend don't serve you breakfast. So you say, okay, let me just see if I'll leave this one. So you can watch that one like 20 seconds. And TikTok will be like, okay, we showed him the, the first video, he watched 30 seconds. This one, he watched 20 seconds. And then they will now recommend another video. You know, it's called recommender systems, machine learning algorithm, all those things. You people, uh, those in tech will know what I mean. They will recommend another product for you. And then you watch the video, 30 seconds. Then another uh, twerking video comes up. And then you watch that one, 60 seconds. Ah, what are you telling TikTok? TikTok will be like, ah, we don't cash them. So this guy, after we have shown him the light, this is what he wants to watch. So what will you start seeing? Every time you log into, into TikTok, you will be seeing uh, music videos, uh, dancing videos, and you will like all those videos. The same thing you go to Facebook, right? People are talking, cursing people, discussing about other people, gossiping or saying all kinds of crazy things. Things that you know are not in tantrum with your essence or with your value. You will drop a comment. You will love the post. So what are you going to see? All your friends 
that are talking about that same thing that you love, Facebook will start showing you their posts. So what does that mean? All this, you, you want to apply for scholarships, all the opportunities that you are supposed to be seeing, you are no longer seeing them. All the products, marketing that you are supposed to be seeing to learn from, you are no longer seeing them. So you go to, let's look, leave social media alone. Let's say you are browsing. Are we still okay. here? Okay. Yeah, we're still here. You have five minutes for questioning session, please. Okay, awesome. All those, your other uh, browsing sections, okay? You go, you are browsing. And then you make a certain comment. Or uh, you, you are browsing a certain thing. And then they'll ask you for cookies, isn't it? They ask for cookies. And then you accept cookies. What you don't know is those cookies you are accepting, I always call them small demons in our web browser. The cookies know what your browsing history is like, okay? So I'll end this in like a minute or two. The cookies know what your browsing history is like. So anytime you now go online, what the, 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 the recommender systems will now begin to push certain products that are not in tantrum with your own products, with your own essence. And this is how we know what our audience is like. So if you want to get a good audience for your products, you want to get better clients, you want to see better jobs, you want to see opportunities, you need to become the audience you want to see. That's the point I want to make here. You need to become the audience you want to see, especially online. You need to begin to care about the things your audience is caring about. You, be, you need to begin to search for knowledge, the type of knowledge your audience will be caring about. So from knowing your audience, you be, need to begin to be authentic, especially in a space where we have so many fake news. Make a video, live section in like this one, so that people can connect with your product. People can connect with how honest your strengths are, how honest your weaknesses are. Before you post that you got a job, please tell people that you were also rejected at a point in your life. Let people know that you are also human. It will help to build cross and credibility. I don't know, maybe I'll probably share this slide so that people take your time to go through the length and breadth of what it means to have an ex a, a exceptional social etiquette. And you need to stand out from the crowd. One way I have stood out as a person is to make sure that my, 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 all my social media handles carry my three names. There are so many Davids out there. There are so many Francis out there, but there's only one David Francis F. Young. You know, back in the day, years back when I was a writer, performance poet, I lost a job because when they typed the nickname that I was using on social media back then, they couldn't find my job, you know, my work and all the things I did. But the moment I started rebranding myself, I stood out from the crowd. So what is it you have on your social media handles or even in your business that can make you stand out? Can people search for you and not, for, and not ask whether is, this, is, is he the person or is not the person? So in conclusion, guys, like I told you, my slides were very short. It is very, very possible for you to break out of the noise. And what, when you want to break out of the noise, think about some companies that have been able to do so. And I'm going to mention them. Please write these companies down and make your personal research upon, upon them. Number one, Zappos. Zappos is an online shoe and clothing retailer. They are known for their exceptional customer service. In fact, a, there are certain places, think about Netflix. If you are watching a movie, your job was to watch a movie and leave. But after you are done watching a movie, what happens? Netflix will automatically recommend a movie that looks like the one you finish you know, watching. They will tell you, you may also like. Have you experienced something like that? Use, that? use that idea in your business. If somebody comes to reach out to you, you know, if com somebody comes reach out to you, and they, they, are not, uh, they are not sure of what they want. Tell them what you can offer. Even if they are not sure, tell them what you can offer. Some of my Igbo friends, they are in the market. They know how to do this. Our customer, bia, 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 bia. They say, you are looking for a T-shirt. You say, ah, that T-shirt, we don't get to. But come, man, let, come, let, come, let me show you. We have this one. In fact, come, taste this one. You know, that is it. Become, become a proponent, a lover of your product. So Zappos did that so well. Research on that, guys. 
and look at the Ritz Carlton. I'm going to type this up there. The Ritz Carlton is a luxury hotel. Also look at Chick Chick Fil A. This I have I have attended. I've I've, I've gotten some products from them uh, in the U.S. Very 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 good guys when it comes to social etiquette. We know of Pantagonia as well. It's an outdoor clothing company. And then of course you know Apple. What makes Apple so unique? What makes them so unique? It's because of their social etiquette. They have been able to key into what people want. And that is, people want to have that idea of, I have an iPhone. Back in the day, you know, if you use iPhone, <laughs> if you use iPhone, do incredible things. Let me not mention, but if people know what I mean, right? That is it. They are keen into that product. So I'm going to type this in the comment section so that you can research on these companies and ask yourself, how can I stand out? Remember, in summary, how can I stand out? But before you stand out, ask yourself, do I have anything that's making me stand in the first place? Is there anything I am standing upon that if called upon, I can talk about it? And from there, look at the, the ideas I have shared with you. Be your first audience. When you are your first audience, remember where you were coming from and ask yourself, if I want people to buy into me as a brand, if I want people to buy into me as a person, you are a beautiful lady, isn't it, Udeme, our, our host? If you want people to buy into your awesomeness, ask yourself, can I appreciate me? I always tell people, can you marry you? Can you love you? Can you present you? And if you do this, you won't have a hard time locating your audience. And the rest, the rest of your growth will begin to move from there. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I talk so much, right? Of course. <laughs> Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you very much. This was quite incredible. In fact, some people were sending love emojis to you. This, this, this means a whole lot. The lectures today was quite incredible. And we have appreciate it so much. Very quick one. We have some questions rolling in. Please, if you have questions to ask, raise up your hands. Let's um, unmute you. And um, please, do stand by so you can unmute those who have indicated. So please send in your question if you have any question. But if you are sure that this class was clear, you understood everything, you're going to master your graph from today, and you are going to reintroduce yourself to your audience and make yourself that very audience you want. Be presentable as much as you can. Do that, get that quick. Raise up your hands for questions. Oh, we are saying thank you, a lot of thank yous coming to you. Oh, Akengan, that is so, so nice. So, so nice. Okay. I think um, somebody just said something I wanted to say at the beginning. You arrived at this call at 8.01. Penetrating your market, you need to be punctual. You need to be on time. And that was what you did. Thank you so much, sir. That was my first lesson I actually got from here. Okay. All right, we have Cynthia. Please unmute Cynthia. We have Cynthia um, raising up her hands. She wants to ask questions. Okay, Cynthia, I've asked you to unmute. The floor is yours. Cynthia, you have been asked to unmute. But they may have unmuted. I think you also muted her after I unmuted her. So just, she's unmuted now. Hello, okay. good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, thank you for... The speaker it was really, really, really good to hear you speak. It was reaffirming. My question is, I know that there, it's important to, like you said, Microsoft um, and the other people that have their essence, you've located what exactly you, you want, what your value is. But my question is, what if in cases where you have more than one value, more than one thing to offer? Because she said something like, oh, today you might be like, you, you might be doing one particular thing online, you might be selling a product, a service, and tomorrow you come and you start selling something different from what you've currently been selling, you know? So I'm, I'm trying to understand what, what if you, if you, you've not um, 
gotten to the process where you incorporate everything that you have of value to one particular thing. And what if, in cases where you have more than one value and product or service to offer, and then you you want to build them separately. So how do you like do that? Because I know that um, for Microsoft and all these things, that, I don't think that that's the only single thing that they have of value that they are selling. Um, they definitely have other things of value that they are selling that is their product and services. But it's like um, you said, you come today, you do one thing, come tomorrow. So I'm trying to understand how you can incorporate everything you have of value because I feel like human beings are not limited. But I understand the, the, the importance of being known for one thing because in that one thing, you have more, you know, people seeing you, you have more visibility and everything. So that's my question. Thank you so much. Perfect. Can I answer that immediately? Of course. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, Cynthia, thanks so much for that brilliant question. Let me ask you one question. Are you married or single? Or married and single? Is Cynthia see here? Yeah, Cynthia, you have been asked to unmute. I think you can let her stay unmuted. Sorry, okay. I'm I'm single, I'm not married yet. Okay, thank you so much. So I would use an example you can connect with. If you were married, I would probably use an example you can connect with. Do you remember uh, that when people approach you for a relationship, what do they, they, they come and I don't know how they do it these days because I'm old school. I know they do toast too much. But let's say that we want to approach that this handsome guy that's coming to approach you. The guy who probably asks you, okay, I'm, I'm David, what's your name? And you said Cynthia, and that's it. And the guy would say, probably they are interested in you and let's have a date. He's taking his time and you are accepting what he's saying per day. It is only much later in the relationship that you will now know, ah, this guy, he doesn't have a good habit to this one now one chance or this one gets money or this one. So you begin to discover so many other things about him. But when you met him at first, the point was to have a relationship. The point was to say yes. It is in saying yes to him or it is in you saying yes or in anyone saying yes to you or any, any other person you know that they are beginning to build other products, other levels of them to you. So what I'm saying is, if you get the idea, when you are coming out to introduce yourself to the world, introduce yourself to the world as this guy, introduce yourself to the world as a singular entity, introduce yourself to the world as that person that is selling shoes. It is when you have built an audience that knows your essence and your value. Now, it is not the time to introduce another product, but when you are build an audience and you want to get to, you know, have another product, let's say you want to start selling wigs. Now is not the time to say, ah, people, I am selling wigs now, come and buy. No, when you do that, you will begin to lose the shoes uh, audience. So what you are going to do is you build a team of those who are also interested in marketing your wig value. Are you with me? In marketing yes, your weak value. So when you build a team of those who can market your weak value, you now have another sector of people inside your company still. Let's say Cynthia brand of companies. You started first with shoes. You now build a team of those who can concentrate on weeks so that they can bring their ideas to market to people who love how weak is marketed. Because your years of marketing shoes is not going to be the same way you're going to market the weeks. So that's why mm -hmm. I tell young people, when you have so many products to sell, don't go out there and sell all of them because not only you poverty cash pass. No, when you have so many products to sell, your first target, and I learned this when working in the nonprofit sector, all the people volunteering, you are learning something that you probably don't know. And what that thing is, teamwork. Because when you go to communities to see lives, you are seeing people that don't that cannot uh, drink uh, cannot drink water, and you are also seeing people that can drink water but there's no water. 
You are seeing people that have died because of uh, uh, domestic violence. You're also seeing people that died because of uh, election malpractice or election violence. You are seeing communities that have so many problems. You cannot go and say, hey, mm -hmm. my name is Cynthia, I don't learn. I'm here to solve all your problems. No, you have to go into the community, let them say yes to you. And when they say yes to you, you look at your value and say, you know what? My value is to empower young people. So you begin to look at young people in that community to empower them. And when you are done empowering them in that community, you have done your value. You know, you have shared your value with them. Then you can now share your other things that you say. You now tell them, you know what? I have discovered in your community that there is no good drinking water. I want to build a team, right? And this team, because you know your community, I want you to be in charge of it. I want you to get me the data. I want us to build something else. So what I'm saying is, young people, do so much. You will never come online to see me selling cars. But you people don't know that when I was in Abuja many years back, I used to sell cars. I even have a Facebook page, right, dedicated to selling of cars. Eh? I was into farming when I was in Kaduna. I did bartending when I was in Lagos, you know, worry. I was teaching coppers any ground workshop and getting paid for it, you know, worry. Wedra Road. In Edo State, I was teaching young people in communities, Iraho, all right? I was doing that. In the US, in uh, Michigan, I was in Foster Community Center, part time work. I was doing that. And in, in, during the day, I was presenting some of my papers to professors in Michigan State University. I was also working with, in the nonprofit sector, I mentioned this, in fundraising, in project management. If you look at my, all those titles you see on my LinkedIn, I was also into cybersecurity because I worked with the guys on Salesforce. But you won't come, I have so many things I did to survive as a young man, right? But when I am sending out an application, Cynthia, when you are sending out an application, do you send out an application, a business proposal, telling people that you sell shoes, you sell human beings, you sell goats, you sell cats, you sell uh, wigs? No, <laughs> you are going to choose the one that you know people are going to easily say yes to. Meanwhile, you have four other, four. look at Dangote, for instance. That is an example of someone that we can all consider. Look at Apple products. We have Apple laptop. We have so many Apple products. But they have so many teams that are dedicated to these different products. You won't see the founder of Apple moving around, talking about all of them at the same time. So if you have so many products, don't be in a hurry to push them out. Be in a hurry to connect with people that can work with you to push those products out. Using the idea, using your experience, you can scale those other products. I don't know if I'm making sense. Yes, you, you definitely answered my question 100%. Thank you so much for the clarity. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Oh, thank you so much, sir. That was a very insightful response. Anyone else? Anyone else? Because we are about to do something. Somebody is saying we should leave this session up till 10. Oh, my God. Now you're making so much sense that we don't need to let you go. <laughs> I don't even know what to say now. I, I am not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. They're trying to bribe me into making you stay up till 10. No, that's not going to happen. Please, if you have questions, indicate so we round up this session. Okay, in um, one minute, if we do not have any question, we will be moving quickly to say a word of thank you to our speaker for tonight. It did um, amazingly well. It was quite educational, inspirational. In fact, the truth of the matter is that you were sharing a true life experience. And this was not rewriting a story, but telling your story the way it is and the way it was and the way it will be, <laughs> of course, yes. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, we have on the floor, the very last question, we'll go to uh, Ibru. Please don't unmute him. Okay, go ahead. Good evening. Okay, good evening. Uh, Thank you, Mr. David. It has been an interesting session. Uh, my question is, based on your emphasis, uh, most of us, you know, finding clarity, essence, and all of that has been a major challenge, considering the 
the state of mind and things around the world presently. What exactly can you actually point to us as a way to actually find your essence in this current world, in this present time? I, I believe you will be able to answer this clearly for me with the way you have emphasized on, on it, sir. Thank you. Okay, awesome, awesome. I'm, I'm going to use my personal story again. You see all those things I mentioned, that's a brilliant question. All those things I mentioned, I did. Some of them have never find themselves in, in my CV. I, where I won't go put, say, at the cell car for CV. Who wants to know that one now? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, where I've, I've never put that I was I was a ginger farmer in Kaduna State. I never put that. My the bartending work. In fact, there is one job I was looking for. This was years back, and they they wanted someone who was good in uh, customer service, isn't it? And I was like, ah, I don't do I don't do bartending work now. I call it insult well well from customer. So just brand brand this thing well. I didn't put that I was a bartender. Right, I put there that I was a customer service agent for one luxury uh, uh, hospitality industry and all the grammar some of you used to put in your CVs. So for your question, I'm going to tell you this. As a young person, right? And I know this because uh, my love for, the, uh, for STEM, like physics, I love physics and as well as the humanities, a crazy combination if you ask me. My love for physics, you've heard of momentum, the word momentum, isn't it? You've heard of the word inertia. For instance, if you are, if you are holding something and flinging, you know, putting it this way, the more you put it, the, the more the circle becomes straighter, isn't it? You know all those things people put in their body and then they shake it, that round thing, how is it called? They put it and they shake it and they shake it and they shake it, right? Now, that is like that they are they are building a momentum that comes to to some style some kind of stability in their body so that it can no longer fall now remember a football or a basketball I used to play basketball when you put it on your finger right and then you hit it you can leave it right the 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 inertia of that football will make it stay on your finger but it's still rotating now think about the the planetary bodies the Earth. The Earth has never fell down anywhere. If not, none of us will be here. Abi will get Zoom call for heaven. Abi hell. Right? The Earth. The Earth is still there. It's still. It's still moving around the sun. Other planetary bodies are doing the same thing. So there is always the law of the universe. That is how it works. So if you are right here as a human being and you are confused about your stability period, what it means is that if you are confused about your stability period or what exactly. Um, or your question was finding that type, that thing, that your essence, right? If you are confused about that, your stability period, what it means is that you have not built anything. You have not built a momentum to be able to be stable. And what that means is that you have not been able to either volunteer more with more organizations. You have not been able to provide services more. You've not been able to um, expedite action or better still work with Lots of companies more. I've worked with a car company. I I told I told myself, okay, this is not where I want to die. I've worked with the the uh, I've worked with some some of the uh, entertainers. Some of you know in, when I was in Lagos, and I didn't like the entertainment industry. And sometimes I read some of these things. Now I've I've met some some interesting people when I was working in Lagos, and I say, no, this is not the life I want. I've worked as a bartender. I say, this is not the life I want. I've worked as a volunteer in a TV station. I say, no, no, no. I love it. I know I love the whole acting. I love the uh, shoot. No, I say, no, this is not the life I want. This is as, as a teenager growing up. I've traveled to over 26 states in Nigeria. Don't forget. And I've also been out. And I keep trying these things. Because if you are coming from a low-income background, you don't have the luxury rich people have to say, ah, I will be a doctor and tomorrow you are a doctor. Ah, no, 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 no. Don't. Your own inertia, your own stability, your own universe, your own energy is not, it's not working because what happens for the rich guys is that they, have, they already have the momentum. They already have the structure. They already have the money, right? The momentum is there. They just need to choose where they want to show their stability. You, you don't have that luxury. And what that means, you need to, you need to, you need to do more from the ground up. 
Initially in Nigerian politics, we used to believe in grassroots action. When people vote for, uh, or for, for uh, local government chairman, this was uh, during af shortly after the, 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 the independence, right? That's why you can have people who, who have a, a, a basic degree or even uh, secondary school and they were in top positions. That's because their communities understood their grassroots programs. They got their momentum. So they were building up to the top. So, but right now, all you need is, I don't know, you, you people know now, you don't need that momentum again sometimes. You just need to appear from nowhere and you don't blow. No, if you are really genuine, you need that momentum. And that momentum is don't be afraid to take risks. Don't say, you don't, you don't get work and work come, you say it's too small. No, come on for your house. Go and discover that you don't really love this job. I was earning 18,000 Naira for two years in rural Nasarawa state, many years back. It took one babe that I used to love telling me, oh, more, you, I, can't, I can't do this again. No, you, you, are not, you are not sending me money as I used to. And one guy was struggling my babe with me that time. Before I say, oh, more, I can't live with this 18K again. No, before my brain just set. I say, how can, it, how can it, one of the best graduating students be earning this type of money? So I start look, I start re-engineering my thoughts. You get? So you need to try things. Don't be afraid to say yes to opportunities. Volunteer. These days, young people volunteer and they're asking for money. No, ask yourself, let me volunteer so that I will know if I love this work, if this work will show me my true essence, my true value. You need to do things. That's my answer to you, guy. Do things. And do things in places people say you shouldn't do those things. Don't go and kill yourself and say, I send you to do things. No, do things in a corporate space. Do things in the business space. You are complaining you don't have a job in your state and you are single. Come on, move out. Go to another state. Take that risk. Do things. I can tell you, when you do things, something in your head will touch one day. No be madness touching, but something in your soul will whisper to you and say, remember, there is this job you did. You loved it. Even if you were not earning more, but you saw potentials in that job. You saw something in it. Now you can now stick on it. I've done so many things. Before you see me sticking, sticking on tech now, right? I've, I've done so many things and I say, you know, this is where I want to pitch my tent, right? This is where I want to start building products for African communities to appreciate. So my answer is simple again, do things. And when you do things, you will get the right momentum to, be, to get that stability and to say, yes, I have found myself. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. I think um, at this point, I remember I say my mentor, the late Dr. Bon King, said, he said that the problem of Africa is free food, that we need to get out of our comfort zone. So that is to you, get out of your comfort zone and get to do things differently. And um, of course, you'll definitely be able to find your excellence. All right, we'll be taking no more questions for this session. And um, for everyone on this call, please turn in tomorrow, same time, 8 p.m. Um, GMT, Nigeria time. And um, we'll be so, so happy to have you. And we'll be having beautiful speaker joining us tomorrow. Okay, to our speaker today, please, we have a special gift for you. And um, I hand over the floor to Dr. Casey. Doc? Yes. Um so first, David, I can't see you. I want to be seeing you, as I said. I mean, um, amazing. So one, one thing you need to understand is there are few people that, my list of people I want to meet is not that long. Um, but the way that I get to identify with those people is by getting connected to what they do. And David will tell you, I've um, sent him DMs over time just to appreciate what he does. Um, and when I reached out to him for this session, he didn't even take a second thought. I think this is also coming for to connect with that aspect of who are you and what is that your essence, right? When people know the sincerity of what you do, it becomes much easier for you to create that, um, that uh, support system that you are looking for. And I mean, this has been mind blowing, amazing. I know you, you talk that much. You, you, like you said, you're a talker, absolutely a professional beggar. <laughs> I think we would probably come to you very soon as the camp, 
to learn how to to um to up our begging, right? <laughs> our professional begging. So David, no, really, I, I think you also need to let him teach you how to sell week. The way you like this week, I'm not sure <laughs> where that came from. <laughs> There's a connection somewhere. But um, yes, I just thought, like David, really, this was this was really inspiring. You did great justice to this topic. Um, I always like stories or examples where people put themselves out there, and this is not, you know, rocket science or textbook. Um, experience. This is your own experience and um, demonstrating that dexterity, that um, uh, resilient, that ruggedness, you know, that can do. Refusing. I always tell people that my mentee is that we refuse every form of mediocrity, like in totality, right? No, in every way, in every form, in every shade. Absolutely, we, re we, we deny it. And we do not deny it by casting and binding it for the sake of it. We deny it by being intentional to refuse to be small, you know. Um, and it's nice to have this session where you use your life as an example to show what is possible when you refuse, right? To 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 um, to look for excuses because you can always find excuses. You just need to shake your head. There are excuses everywhere. So thank you so much. The energy, the passion, the the language, the communication, um, absolutely. This is a session that I'm pretty sure we are going to, I'm going to have all my mentees watch it um, and really summarize it. This is absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, and I hope to meet you very soon. I, like, I have you on my list of people to meet. So, and I'm pretty sure that uh, that would happen sooner than, than later. So we have here, just as an appreciation, I'm going to give this award. Um, so, and also read what is written on it. So this is an award, honorary award from Dikem, presented to David Francis F. Young for his valuable contribution to us, child, youth development, and mental health advocacy. I know if we wanted to put all the things that you do, uh, we would probably need a bigger, <laughs> a bigger space. I mean, you are absolutely amazing in the tech space. I have heard a lot about how you communicate and, you know, that knowledge of physics and bringing it with your um, and your other aspect of your experience to really teach in such a fun, um, interesting manner. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. This, it's been such an honor. I, I, I really appreciate having the opportunity to share the stage with you. And yes, we'll definitely see you again before I die, of course. And I hope you see I see you. Yes, I do. So, many of, <laughs> so many of your other mentees as well. Um, so thank you. I appreciate. I appreciate. Thank yeah, you, everyone, for, for listening. Thank you, studio. everyone, for listening. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So, 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 so. Yes, sir. I'm so young. Can you remind the team of tomorrow's session? I'm sharing my screen. Okay, quickly, quickly. Uh, tomorrow we'll be having Peter Son on the stage. He will be speaking to us on the um, doc. I think something is covering the topic. Volunteering, a tool for yeah, okay. becoming more. Yeah, it's all to becoming more, that volunteering. Yes, you have to be on this call because definitely you need to understand the excellence of volunteering. Of course, if not for volunteering, and then a lot of things have been used here in the game and in my present life and business through volunteering. I got to learn a whole lot. So I want each and every one of us to be on that call to get the tips on volunteering. Thank you so much. See you. Same time tomorrow, or oh, 8 p.m. Please tune in to the Nigerian time, 8 p.m., as we will be having um, Professor Peter Sun on the call. Thank you very much, and thank you for joining today's call. I hope you learn a whole lot. And um, go back to the general group and be dropping your lessons because we need to understand what you got. Let others who did not join get to see that they miss a whole lot because, because, because. See you guys. I love you. All right, bye-bye. Great job, Bye. Bye. Great job. Bye. Great job. Great job.